Okay, so this is option C, fresh water for IB geography. And the syllabus point is flood mitigation, including structural measures such as dams, afforestation, channel modification, and levee strengthening, and planning such as personal insurance and flood preparation and flood warning technology, and also a case study. So first of all, structural measures. So dams, we have a dam here, and dams are basically used to, put, to control flooding, as you can move these gates and like control the um, discharge, and like you can stop the water. You can, you know, like just change the flow of the river basically and that can be quite dangerous and we'll discuss that in another video and then we have um afforestation basically replanting trees um ignore this but just this idea of replanting trees um basically a way of increasing interception and that of course limits the flood um like the magnitude of a flood or like the it increases the lag time and then we have strengthening levees which basically is like the levees on the banks of the river um are artificially like increased in size which kind of prevents the water when it um like what's it called like reaches bank full discharge and in this case, actually, a berm is being made of limestone as a way of, like, preventing maybe any um, complications for this um, pre-existing levee. And there's also this idea of channel modification, which is basically, like, maybe straightening the channel or creating a diversion spillway. A diversion spillway is basically another path, path for the water to flow and a... Um, Straightening is basically making the river more straight so the water can flow like kind of more rapidly and at more ease but that can have more that can have other complications because you're like disrupting the natural order of the river. Okay now for planning so personal insurance and flood preparation and flooding flood warning technology so this is a poster and it's basically showing like it's kind of advertising flood insurance. So obviously your home um, can get destroyed from a flood. You can lose your personal belongings. So this is just showing that you should, you know, invest in flood insurance. Um, again here, this is showing like tips, flood preparation. So before a flood, stay informed, um, prepare with an emergency bag, know how to evacuate, leave before the flooding starts, um, keep useful items, ladders, sandbags, ropes, and it tells you what to do during the flood and after the flood and um it, it's like the idea of flood warning technology so maybe there's a f evacuation orders as a warning um just like this idea of keeping communication maybe you get a text of a warning and that type of thing okay now planning again so this is again like more into flood warning technology so there are maybe um networks um that that use all of these different things so um, to like monitor the flood and then that notifies people through their phone through like websites through databases and things so there might be canal and canal and canal the heck oh canal and river water level sensors installed inundation sensors installed at vulnerable locations such as traffic junctions schools hospitals shops government offices pumping station sensors um, location sensors, automatic rain gauges. I honestly still don't know how to say that word. I think it's gauges, but I don't know. And that's installed at key locations across the city to monitor what rainfall. So just this idea of having like a network of information. Okay, now onto the case study. So Thailand and Mississippi both have had like very differing ways of flood mitigation. So first of all, let's look at Thailand. So the river... Um, Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's a 65,000 kilometer squared area. The river has 24 million inhabitants on the basin, and there's a lot of blame upon the canal dwellers for like the core, the like damage of the floods. So the causes of floods are that urbanization has created impermeable surfaces, irrigation has increased, and and uh, 
I guess this is a cause of like the need for mitigation. In 2019, the BTS had to close because of floods. So the methods are that in 1990, they made a control center of 70 units around the country, or kind of surrounding the river, um, which is the Chao Phraya River. Um, Kasetsar University has researched. There's a royal irrigation project, afforestation warning systems, dikes and walls built for 70 billion baht. 1.5 billion baht has been invested for dredging. And on the other hand, for the Mississippi, the background is that it's the largest river in the USA. There was a great flood in 1993. 50 people died, 55 towns were lost. The floodplain is 150 kilometers wide. It's the largest in the world. It's the largest river port in the world and it carries 600 trucks of capacity. So the causes for mitigation are that there's loads of Delta inhabitants so they need this protection and houses have been washed away in the 1927 floods. 700,000 farmhouses were lost in that flood. And methods are lock gates for boats, so controlling like when boats can come in and out, modeling like flood prediction models, levees and dams six um, dams were built on the mississippi there's a nine kilometer floodway from misery to nor new or new orleans um, and there's also cases of river straightening okay and obviously um, these methods are like they have negative consequences too so just keep that in mind that you need like a balanced argument when you're maybe discussing this in, in an essay or something but overall to compare these two thailand seems to have a bit more of like a warning system prediction kind of system whereas mississippi seems to be more reliant on like structural measures